All right, this video is about custom protocols. So what is a custom protocol? A custom protocol is when you're using a protocol that is not something that is typically listed. So you're not using HTTP or HTTPS or even FTP. Custom protocols are those ones like Geo or mail to or SMS, ones that can trigger other programs to launch. Well, if you start the name of a protocol with web and then a plus sign, you can put whatever you like inside of here, as long as it's a valid name, you can create your own protocol and then you can register your website to be the handler for that. So if a link comes in, if you've got a link on some website that uses your custom protocol, it will direct the user to your website and you can also pass information along. So like here, I could pass this string. Now, I've only got one word, but I could treat it like a query string and have a whole bunch of information there. Here's a link that goes to web plus Bob. That's my protocol. And I'm going to pass the string Louise. So what I want to do in my code is I want to set up the registration for web plus Bob. That way, in the future, if I click on these links, it's going to come to my website here, my 127.001 colon 3003. That's going to be the domain that is used or the origin that is used when there's a link with that. So let's jump into the code. Here's my web page in my script. So right now I've got a DOM content listener. Um, when the page loads, when the HTML is finished reading, it's going to call my init function. And I've got a second thing here which is going to check to see, hey, are you on the character page? If so, that's where we're going to go to handle these special links. In our website, we want this one landing page to handle all the incoming links. So right now, this is the link. This is what's going to show up in the href attribute. If we look inside of here, inside the href attribute, we've got web plus bob colon and then some data. We want to convert that into this, this URL right here. And we're going to have a query string with char equals. And then I want to take whatever this value is and put it there. So this is what we want to create. And it's actually quite simple to do. All we have to do is call the navigator register protocol handler. And inside of here, there's three parameters to pass. The first one is, what's the protocol? Well, in our case, it's web plus Bob. Second one, what is the URL? And the third one is going to be the title. So our URL is going to be this. That is the URL. So if the browser where we register this sees web plus Bob, it knows this is where it's supposed to go. And then we want to put percentage sign s. This is what's going to grab the string. So whatever is written after the colon that comes after this, that's going to be the value right here. So we're going to be able to extract it from this right here. Uh, the title actually, it's an old deprecated thing, but um, we should still put it in there. It's not going to be used, but just to make sure that we're compatible with the early versions of the protocol handler, it's a good idea to throw it in there. Okay, that's it. That's all we needed to do was just call this one method. When the page loads, this is going to happen. And then we're going to write this script afterwards, after we register this, to handle clicking on it. So with that method, we'll jump back into the browser. And you can see right here in Firefox, I'm getting add this as an application for Web Plus Bob links. So it wants to view this website as an application that is handling links that use the protocol web plus Bob. So I'm going to say, sure. Yeah, I'll go ahead and do that. That's now registered. Now in Chrome, if I refresh this, I'm not going to get a prompt of any sort. And that is because it's going to ignore links if they don't use HTTPS. The one exception to that <laughs> is we're on localhost, so it is going to accept this, but anything else needs to have HTTPS. So allow this. Sure, I'm going to allow it. So done. We've got, so it's working here in Firefox. It's working in Chrome. 
I've also got edge. I'll bring that over. In edge, you're going to see a similar link right here. So if I click on that, they're going to call it a service handler, but I'll say, sure. Yeah, I'll allow it here as well. Um, and then we've got opera as well. I've got that one open. There we go. Here's the prompt in opera and we'll allow it here. So they all have slightly different uh, prompts to say, Hey, do you want to allow this browser to handle links of that sort? So if you're in that browser, we can do it. But uh, here, I'm just going to minimize these, get these out of the way. We'll just deal with one of the browsers. So I've got Chrome here. I've got Firefox here. I can use either one. It's going to work in either. Now, clicking on this is going to send me this link. You can see down here, it's written very, very tiny. You might not be able to see it if you're on mobile, but it says web plus Bob colon Louise. So if I click on this, hey, allow this site to open the link. Yeah, sure. And I will, well, I can say always allow, but you can choose application. And here, it recognizes this one. It also recognizes Opera. So Firefox is seeing itself and Opera. I'm going to stick with this. We'll say open the link. There we go. So this is the default. This has taken me to the character.html page. And right now this says char equals web space or plus sign Bob equals Louise or colon Louise. It's just been encoded with the percent two B and percent three A. But there it is. That's our protocol. So we can now write some script so that when this page loads, if we're on character.html, we can grab that value out of the query string and do something on the page with it. So I'm going to go back here just so the next time we click it, we can see that ha happening. So inside of here, in my check custom that runs every time the page loads, I'm going to look at the location. What is my current location, path name? That's everything that comes after the domain. If I've got character.html inside of there, I'm going to go into that URL, get the search param. So that's all the query string parameters. For us, it was one that was going to be called uh, char equals right here, char equals. So we're going to look for that. So if params, that's my search params object. Um, if you haven't worked with search params before, uh, I've got a link to that video up at the top there. So if we do have it, we're on the page, we've got something there. All I'm going to do is extract that value and write it inside of the heading. So I'm going to say that uh, get the query string parameter called char, we get its value, and I'm going to split it on web plus Bob colon, because that was coming through in the query string. I'm going to take that value. Now, this returns an array where we're going to get nothing in front of this, but after it will be the value that we want. So it's an array with two things, nothing and the thing we want. So I'm just going to add that onto the end of here. I'm going to say, take item number one from the array. So it's the second thing in the array. We can write that out in the console if you want. And then I'm going to write it on the page. So it's the H2 tag inside of my header. Come back here. So here's the header. Here's the H2 tag inside the header. This is the one by default. It says no character selected. So I want to take that value and put it inside of there. I'll use my optional chaining and set its text content equal to the, whatever the name is converted to uppercase. Okay. So refresh this, make sure I do have the latest script. Click on the link. Do I want to allow it? Yes, I'm going to allow it. I'm going to take Firefox and open the link. Oh, probably got an error here. Let's take a look in our console. 
invalid left hand assignment. Oh yeah, we can't use optional chaining um, on the left hand side. We can use it over here in the values, but not in the assignment. So instead of that, we'll do the same thing, except with an if statement. There we go. So if that thing does exist, assign the value. Yeah, there we go. There's Louise. We'll go back to the home page and let's change this just to show that it does actually work. We'll change this from Louise to, let's say, Jean. There we go. We click the link. Allow it. Sure. And let's open it in Opera just for the hell of it. There we go. So it opened up in Opera and we got the right character here. So that is a custom protocol. It really is quite simple to implement, but if you take some time and you think about where you would apply this, I mean, you're not going to do it everywhere. It's not going to be something you do all the time, but having the ability to create a protocol that's going to be custom for your website, if you've got a lot of custom content, if you're going to be advertising in a lot of places and you want to direct people to your website, this could be something to do. Now, you're still going to have to have the normal links like this, but having something like this may improve the way people are able to find content on your sites. All right. If you have any questions about these, please feel free to leave those in the comments. I'll answer as many as I have time for. And as always, thanks for watching.